Alright, look. I'm about to go on a rant real quick, because this is some fucking bullshit. I'm gonna come out and say it right now, that I think 343 doesn't deserve Halo, and they've proven they can't maintain the brand as a whole. Now look, I don't want to discount all the positive things 343 Industries has done for Halo, but they've absolutely done more harm than good over these last 10 years. And it shows now more than ever, and that's saying something, because Halo 5 was a dumpster fire. You know, it's disappointing as a Halo fan to look back over the previous two years prior to Infinite's launch, and remember all the W's 343 were taking after over seven years of taking L after L to the chin. It was actually a great time to be a Halo fan for once. The MCC was receiving constant updates and support, and Halo Infinite was not far off on the horizon, which I might add, most of us were cautiously optimistic for. It finally seemed like the franchise was going to uptrend again for the first time in nearly a decade, but unfortunately, it wasn't to be so. And to be clear, I don't even want to make this video. The fact that I'm sitting here writing all this down and recording it pisses me off. I'd rather be recording two guys one Halo right now. No. I get for saying Halo sucks, dude. <laughs> right now. But I feel the situation has gotten so bad that I need to say my piece. And I encourage all of you to do so as well. I fear if the franchise continues in this direction, Halo will fizzle out and die with a whimper, and it doesn't deserve that. In this video, I really just want to talk about the state of Halo this last year or so. So let's get into it, shall we? I don't give a lot of background on myself or my personal life, but I will say this. I've been with Halo since the beginning. The first time I ever played Halo was Combat Evolved back in 2001 at a LAN party one of my neighbors threw. It was amazing. I was a little kid and one of my friend's parents would throw Halo parties with his buddies on the weekends and they'd all bring their kids over and a bunch of our neighborhood's kids would also come over and play. In fact, even Cheese Whiz went to these with me since we grew up together. Four Xboxes, each hooked up with surround sound speakers and all the pizza and soda a kid could ever ask for. Ever since then, I was hooked. I asked my parents to get it for me and the next Christmas there was an Xbox under the tree. After that, it's a wrap. And that's where we were 20 years ago. And then, in 2004, we got the first online experience. In 2007, we got the best game in the series, bar none, with the best features and the best custom games. And now, in 2022, what do we have? I cannot believe it's been almost a whole year and they haven't added at the bare minimum Infection, Griffball, more than six maps, Forge Mode Complete, a fix to custom games, and maybe just finish co-op campaign? I'm gonna call a spade a spade here and say the game is just flat out unfinished. They tried to ship it to us with the launch of the Series X in 2020, remember that. But the community righteously bullied them into delaying their unfinished product for another year into 2021. Okay, now we're looking at a launch window that could align with the 20th anniversary of Combat Evolve, the first game in the series. That could be exciting, but nope. They shadow dropped the multiplayer as a beta, and we were all happy for a bit. Except what's this? There's no dedicated Slayer playlist on day one? That's odd. Wait, so I have to enter into the quick play queue to possibly play Slayer because it's mixed in with CTF, Oddball, and Stronghold. Okay, well, it's a beta. Maybe they'll change it in a day or two. Well, they didn't, because it wasn't a beta. A beta doesn't come out three weeks before a game's supposed to launch. For roughly a month after the release of Halo Infinite, a lot of connection and server issues were cropping up. At one point, BTB was completely unplayable around Christmas time for about a week, and for a few weeks after, it was still hardly playable while they worked to fix it. Here's where cracks started to emerge. Halo Infinite is touted as a live service game by 343 Industries, but they do not make new content for it at a pace that would suggest that it is really a live service game. They make enough content for the shop, I guess, to merit that, but they don't make enough maps or new modes or have even still put in modes that are bare bones in the game to begin with, like Infection and Griffball. I mean shit, 343, if you guys can't figure out how to make maps, hurry the fuck up, finish Forge, give it to us, and let us make the content for this game, because you guys have proven that you cannot do it anymore. Or you just flat out don't want to. Seems to be the case to me. Here's the deal. The game has been out since November of 2021. It is now October of 2022. There have been two new maps put into the game, one for BTB and one for 4v4. That's it. And while I find that these two new maps are great, that is not enough content in the last 11 months to keep players satiated and coming back to your game for more. The entire business model of free to play is to get players to spend as much of their real money as possible on the in-game shop, period. That's why the multiplayer is free. 
video game developers these days don't make a lot of their money on just selling the game itself. And since more and more people are moving to digital copies of games these days, there's no limit to how many they can physically produce because they aren't physical copies. They seem to focus all their attention on that in-game shop, but there's nobody buying anything from it. Or at least it seems like it. I don't buy anything from it, and there's hardly any players on here to begin with, so who's buying anything? I was pretty annoyed when I began to write the script for this video, but as I've sat here and gone back and forth writing, recording, and playing online matches of Halo Infinite, I've been having a ton of fun playing it even in spite of all the negatives. I just wish the developers would have kept their promise and supported this title properly. Instead, for whatever reason, I have no idea what it is, probably poor management, they've let this amazing potential go to waste almost totally by now. If they had just put their nose to the grindstone and pushed out regular content every three months or so, like clockwork, I guarantee this game would have been a success. This game was built on solid framework, but they don't seem to support it very well as the problem. Here's an example of a game who did the live service perfectly for a few years. Rainbow Six Siege. Every three months, like clockwork, four times a year there would be a new season in the game. Two new operators, one on attack and one on defense. These new seasons used to also bring brand new maps every time. We'd get four new maps a year and the drop of a new season meant a lot of bug fixes were coming around and throughout the season they'd continue to support the game by fixing glitches and bugs. 343 doesn't seem to do any of this and they need to be. If 343 had just kept their promise and made regular content for the game like they said they were going to do and like they need to do if they're running a live service game, they would not have received so much backlash. And here's the worst problem of all. This game flopped so hard that it damaged the entire franchise's reputation. The TV show didn't do anything to help, but that's a separate point I'll get to later. The reason that this is the largest problem is that 343 has been calling Halo Infinite a spiritual reboot to the franchise. This game was supposed to be a fresh start. It was supposed to be damage control for the previous eight years that they've had the franchise. And after making mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake, they had a very solid chance to stick that landing, but unfortunately it's just another case of wasted potential. The goal here was to make a solid impression on people who haven't touched Halo in years, and especially players who have never played a Halo title in their life. What does 343 do instead? They sit around wherever the fuck they were, with thumbs up their collective assholes doing jack shit. If they had just finished creating this game before they released it, we wouldn't have such ridiculous problems today. This is absolutely embarrassing for the Halo community, and it never should have happened. I've been working long enough in my life now to make an educated guess that poor management is probably once again the culprit of taking lightning in a bottle and shattering it. This is third strike and you're out. This is your third major title and it's the most broken and the most controversial of them all. Hats off to you. I don't know how you did it. Each one was more broken and unfinished than the last. Strike one. Halo 4 was controversial as hell back when it launched, but at least the game was finished. Bad art style, questionable direction with story, it was basically a COD clone. Overall, it was still a fun game. Strike 2. Halo 5 releases. Solid gameplay, but the campaign sucks balls and it crashes the narrative straight into the dirt, causing Halo Infinite to need to be a spiritual reboot in order to save the franchise's ass. Also, Forge and Infection were delayed for like two or three months after the game came out, so yeah, people were pissed. But we did end up receiving the best version of Forge and the best version of Infection we've ever gotten. Plus, we got the first custom game browser on a console title, but the damage was already done. Now, let's compare that to Halo Infinite, 11 months after launch. I mean, look, seriously, do I need to waste my breath? This video is getting a little long-winded anyway. All the text is right here, so, I mean, there you go. And since we're near the end, I just want to bring up the other smaller points that helped us bring us to where we are currently. The Paramount Plus show. I didn't want to watch it because I knew it would be a steaming hot pile of garbage, and I was right. I'm glad I saved myself from it because the writers don't adhere to the established lore, they don't respect Halo's identity nor the Master Chiefs, and all this did was show us how much they don't care about Halo. If they're willing to rewrite the story just to fit their stupid show, all that shows me is that the people up at the top making the executive decisions don't really give a fuck. As always, Halo 5 is not getting a PC port, and 343 continues to say they don't even care about it, so yeah, don't hold your breath for that one. They pulled down the original 360 servers for all the Legacy games this year, and, well, I mean, the Master Chief Collection's in a functioning state, but it only took them six years to get there. 
Anyway, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Do you agree with the points I made in this video? Let's start a discussion about it down in the comments. I want to see what you guys have to say on this one. As always, if you stuck around to the end of the video, you're an OG OG triple OG and I love you for it. Subscribe or else Mother Teresa will come back from the dead and eat your firstborn child. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. I realize through my eyes, mine and lies gets back Cause I'm someone's pick me Big buds, only two like kidneys Catch up, clock the game, 6-16 Three years later, now I kill every 16